Hey guys, it's Aaron. For this week's skill builder, I want to pass along something I think I saw at a trade show. I think it was Daniel Brown did it. Um, and I think he showed me this like three years ago. And it just recently resurfaced in my mind. I saw something and I went, hey, that's like dance trick. So I figured I'd share it with you. Um, the basic gist of it is the idea of using PNGs to simulate lighting inside of a space. So I won't explain it. I'm just going to do it. So let's go ahead and hop in and do just that. All right. So I have a hallway here. It's kind of a dark hallway. And uh, just a disclaimer, what we're about to do is not necessarily actually add lighting. We only have one lighting source in SketchUp, and that is the sun. So by doing what we're about to do, we're not going to add lights uh, in here. It's not going to render differently, but it's going to give us the effect of uh, lighting in here. So we're going to do that. By importing, we're we'll start just by importing a PNG. Here, I'll, I'll actually hop over here, go to File, and I'm going to Import. I'm going to go to my desktop and grab this light.png. You'll see what it is when I bring it in. I'm going to import it as an image. I'm going to say Import, and I'm just going to drop it on the ground. And I'll scale it up nice and big. All right, so here's what this image is. This image is a transparent PNG uh, with beams of light. That's all it is. That's all that's in here. Real simple. I downloaded it. Um, simple model or simple image file. Uh, real easy. You could actually, if you have any Photoshop shops, no, Photoshop shops, <laughs> you could do this in just a few seconds. Pretty easy stuff. Um, I'm going to take it right now and I'm going to rotate it vertical. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use my arrow keys, right arrow key to rotate it up on red, and I'm going to use my blue arrow key to rotate it so it's facing me, me the camera. All right, so that is what we're working with right now. So at this point, it's just an image, nothing special about this. In fact, I could take it, I can see it's too big, it's going to be too big to fit in here. So first thing I might do is I might hit scale and scale this down so it's a little bit more reasonable size. If I want, I can actually use the scale keys to distort this, um, make it wider or, or skinnier. I could change that, just an image right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and move it. I'm going to grab it right about here in the middle of that light. And I'm going to go look into my hallway. And I have these can lights in here. So I'm going to go to this one right here. I'm just going to stick this right about in the middle of that can light. If I hop out here right now and see kind of have a little bit of a, a glow right there. If I wanted to, I could actually scale it out a little bit more. I could probably have it, you know, come down through the floor, have the beams hit the floor or something like that. Um, you get the idea. There's, there's fine tuning to be done always. So let me put this right back where it was. Just right in the center there. So. That looks kind of cool. That looks nice. It's, it's okay looking, but there's some more things we can do. One thing is as we rotate around, we can start to see that it's flat. So something I might do with this, I'm going to move it back out here, is change the file just a bit. I'm going to, right now it's an image. If we look at Entity Info, it tells us it is an image. Image, we've talked about this before, is kind of a special group. It consists of a single texture on a face. That face is a specific size and it has four edges around it and it's grouped together. It's not a normal group, it is just its own thing, an image. But just like a group, I can right click and I can explode it. I'm gonna go ahead and explode it and then I'm gonna right click on it immediately and say make component. So in the component, I'm gonna name it, I'm just gonna call it light because I'm feeling creative today. Um, I'm gonna set my component axes. I'm gonna put the component axes up here at the center or at the origin of the light. I'm going to click once to place that. Now, next thing it asks, if you watch here, pick the direction for the red axis. I'm going to make sure the red axis goes across the edge, the horizontal edge of the image. Then it's going to ask for green axes, and we can just put that perpendicular to the red axis. It was important to put the red axis here because the next thing I'm going to do is turn on always face camera. Always face camera says always make this beam face towards the red axis. So the red axis will always face towards wherever I am looking at the model from. So as long as that red is across the front, 
this beam of light will always appear facing towards me. So I'm going to go ahead and go click on, we have replace selection with component turned on. That's very important. A lot of people are missing this and wondering why when they create components it shows up in their component library, but their drawing on the same screen is still the same. This is why. Make sure you have this turned on. And click Create. All right, there we go. So now as we spin around, it always will face towards wherever we are. Cool. All right, one last thing. Or actually, two last things. I'm going to double-click to enter the component, and I'm going to use Eraser along with the Shift key to get rid of these boundaries. We don't actually need to cut that out like that. Ooh, looking good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab it, and I'm gonna grab it by the origin. I'm gonna come into this first light right here, zoom in, and just drop that right in the middle of that light. All right, that looks pretty good. That's coming off there. We take this just one step further, one last step to tie it all together. I'm going to select the component, Go up to Edit and hit Cut. Now, I'm going to double click on this light. This light is a component. There are five of them in this model. They run all the way down here. These, these are the five. If I double click into this component, go to Edit, hit Paste in Place, it's going to paste that cut light in the exact same location, but inside the component. Because it's inside the component, that means now the component consists of the light and the light beam. So if I click out here, Ooh, I have lights coming off of all five spots. So again, just a disclaimer, what we did isn't actually going to uh, change the luminescence of the, the hallway. It's not going to put more light in there. It looks like it, it, it put a bunch of bright pixels in there, so it, it made it look a little bit brighter. But what we're actually doing is just kind of simulating light beams. Um, it's something you may use more to visualize inside of SketchUp. This this makes for kind of nice, especially with can lights or spotlights or something like that, to just kind of give a little atmosphere, show a little bit of, uh, you know, depth to your model by actually having those beams of light. Um, it's a great way to do it. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, one of the things you will want to rely on a little bit is Photoshop to do some editing to that image. This one has a little bit of harsh edges right at the end of that light. It probably could have been faded off a little bit more, but uh, like I said, that's easy enough to do if you're inside of Photoshop. There's also, I mean, it's actually a pretty intense light. Uh, it probably would be good to actually dim that down to about 50%, especially with five lights in a row. Right now, it kind of looks more like sprinklers are going off than lights, but you still get the idea. Um, so hopefully you like that. Hopefully that's a new tip to you, something something new. And I got to, like I said, I got to shout out to Dan Brown because I remember him showing me this. So that was a, it's a pretty cool feature right there. A pretty cool way to put lights into a model. So if you did like this, please click like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe. We release videos a couple times a week and you'll be notified if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Most importantly, though, please leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought about this, if you thought we could have made it better anyway, and if you have any ideas that you think would make good skill builders. We like making these videos, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.